Up until recently, I thought making a good first impression was just about concealing my erection when meeting my girlfriend's milfy mum. But surprisingly, there's actually a bit more to it than that. Although in hindsight, that definitely would have been a good place to start. But being able to make a good first impression requires that you know what your social strengths and weaknesses are. For example, when it comes to communicating with new people, there are at least four things that I'm terrible at. Getting to the point I'm trying to make in less than 15 seconds, finishing lists that I've started. But three things I know that I'm really good at, being an attentive listener, telling jokes that utilise the comedic rule of three, and... Uh... So when trying to make a good first impression, there are a few things you need to consider. Firstly, your clothes. You should really consider wearing them. Secondly, eye contact. Now, eye contact can be a bit of an issue, especially between men. Too little makes you look disinterested or uncomfortable. Too much can come off as aggressive. Fortunately, i found that simply standing side by side with a bloke and casually objectifying any women in your field of vision often requires very little eye contact. That's not funny. But all joking aside, whilst we're on the topic of women, I think we all know that in certain situations, men can find it quite difficult maintaining good eye contact with women. Because as it says in the Bible, if God wanted man to look at woman in her eye, he would have placed her breasts on her back. Okay, don't say that in the Bible. But my point is, just because women have boobs, don't mean they should have to watch you disrespect them by staring at their boobs instead of making eye contact. So if you want to make a good first impression on a woman, do the right thing, be a gentleman, and invest in a decent pair of sunglasses. Seriously, you're not funny. The third thing you need to consider is the way you speak to new people. Things to remember. One, you don't want to talk down to people as if you're smarter than them. People don't like that, especially dumb people. Two, if you make a joke that don't get an immediate response, then just let it go. Don't stop and explain what the joke was and why it was funny. And three, people can be quite touchy about certain subjects, so stay away from sensitive topics such as politics, uh, Drake, and an exposed nerve on your tooth. See lads, what I've done there is I've exploited the various uses of the word sensitive. Politics is something that people are sensitive about. Drake is a musical artist who very often portrays himself to be sensitive in his songs, and an exposed nerve on your tooth causes tooth sensitivity. Alright, so in case you didn't catch that, what I just did there by explaining the wordplay joke was deliberately break rule number two for a comedic effect, which in itself breaks rule number one by talking down to you. The last 30 seconds has essentially been one very long but surprisingly layered joke, and I'm not sure if any of it was funny, so I'm going to add a laugh track just to be safe. <laughs> The final thing to consider is the fact that the way a new person responds to you can very often be affected by something someone says about you beforehand. For example, if you were about to meet Karen, someone could say to you, who's that? That's Karen. You really don't want to know her. She's like one of those mean girl social climbers, so she's super fake friendly when she first meets you and pretends to be genuinely interested, but she's really just trying to work out if you're someone she can use later on. Ugh, I hate people like that. Or they could say something like, who's that? That's Karen. She's so lovely. She's like super friendly and sweet and she's such a good listener. You can tell she's one of those really positive ones that just loves people and loves life. Ugh, I hate people like that. And depending on which briefing you were given to Karen, when she comes up to you and says hello with a big smile on her face and starts asking you about yourself, you're probably going to think, man look at them bangers. And then, you're either going to think that she's a warm and friendly person or you're going to suspect that she's putting on an act, even though her behaviour is identical in both scenarios. That was a bit of an exaggerated example, but my point is, although there's a lot you can do to increase your odds of making a good first impression, it's not always possible to control for every variable. So try not to worry about it too much, because maybe you can't win everybody over the first time round, but you'll always get some of them. Think of it like Amy Schumer. On the one hand, she gets a lot of hate, especially online. But on the other hand, she's a hugely famous comedian that regularly performs in front of thousands of people. So, statistically speaking, for every one person who thinks she's terrible, there are probably 10 people who also think she's terrible. Wait, what was my point? Gentlemen! I mean, I don't hate her. If that helps. It doesn't.